Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ben. Uh, that's, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm a senior front-end developer at RBC Wealth Management. And yeah, that sounds bizarre for me to be here. Uh, but we are using Vue in, uh, in RBC. Um, and I'm just going to start to talk about it. Uh, as many of you have probably recognized my accent, uh, I put it cheese on the pictures because I guess it defines me very well. Uh, <laughs> It's a camembert, but I really don't like camembert, actually. It sounds very weird for a French person. Um, anyway, uh, what is that? Um, well, it's fairly easy to see. It is the exact same product, uh, but it looks different. The packaging is different. Uh, basically, it's, it, is, it is really just milk. Uh, in the end, that's what it is. Um, and so that's what I'm going to talk about. How do we make things look different? But having the same ingredient in the first place. Um, and yeah, trust me, I know what I'm speaking about there <laughs> when I'm talking about cheese. Uh, thanks to my designers, uh, you can see my pretty face there. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about design system. Um, yeah, it's a pretty trendy topic. Um, why did we have to build design system? Because we were uh, kind of tired of rebuilding frameworks after frameworks, um, having just basically changing the CSS recreating a code base each time we were launching a new website. Um, since we are responsible of about, I don't know, about 10, 15 different websites that could have three or four major brands, it is very complicated to keep everything up to date and aligned together. Um, so we needed a design system that could adapt to our brands, um, but, but why are we doing that? It's because more and more work like everyone, so we needed to be able to find a real, real code base that everyone can use and, and base their code out. And just so you don't rebuild the wheel constantly. Um, that's a bit of a why we did that. It's not only a UI library for developers, but it's also a UI library for designers. Uh, we also have some guidelines for content editors uh, for social media. Uh, analytics, accessibility, UX. We are trying to build something that is um, big, but that is reflecting on the brand you're, you're actually seeing. Uh, what, so what is Vue.js coming here? As I said before, I work for RBC, and uh, we have a range of developers that can go from a pretty good JavaScript expert, uh, but we have also developers that have been doing their job for about 30, 40 years and the, the range of audience that we have, not everyone is, is able to take on, for example, GSX uh, from React, so that's why we wanted to go with Vue, because you just rely on basic technology that everyone should know as a web developer, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Yeah, that should be fairly simple. And as well, um, we are at the Vue conference, but if I need to launch a, an Angular version of that UI library, it's fairly trivial to use the same HTML code, the same CSS. And since we are really using vanilla JavaScript, um, if you need to just redo the same behavior to another framework, it's fairly trivial. Um, so how did we do that? It basically only rely on, on just that Webpack plugin. Um, and to be honest, that's the only line of code that you will see from my presentation. I haven't put anything else. Uh, the only thing we are doing is um, we have one base code, so all of our components are defined, but, are, but they are using variables. And all those variables are defined in the folder structure that I will show you just in two seconds. Uh, but basically, our Webpack build is just applying the right variables to the right build and uh, spitting out the brand that you should be seeing. Um, so, how is it organized? Um, fairly trivial in some way, uh, I guess. Uh, each, so, we have a theme folder, and under each of those theme folders, we have um, the brand folder. Uh, so, PHN, Philip Hager and Norse, uh, WM for RBC Wealth Management. Under that, um, we have an index file that's, that's just for me to be able to bundle everything together. Uh, I have a components. JavaScript file, uh, that one is actually defining which component should be available for that brand. Because we decided that some brand might not need all the components that we are developing. So we just wanted to be granular in that way. 
Um, the charts.js, um, we do a lot of pretty charts, you know that. Um, we use high chart, and this is basically the theme for that brand. Um, and under that, you have a few variables, and this is what is actually defining our components. Uh, I didn't talk as well about the universal file that you see at the bottom. This is where we have our colors, our fonts, like things that are shared among everything. Um, and on the variables folder, then, you have your brand folder, which would define your primary color depending on the brand that you're building at that moment. Uh, the components variable, which is basically, I need a button with a 50% with a radi border radius. That's what it's doing, basically. Uh, and the layout is as well just a few more variables that are applied across the entire code base. So now what? I can say it's thanks to Fanny Chong on the, on the audience at the back. She probably doesn't want me to point to her, so I won't. Uh, but she helped me to, uh, to come along with that, with that demo. And as you can see here, uh, this is using the Philip Hager and North brand. Um, this is just our alert component. Um, as you, you're seeing here, uh, that's kind of the look and feel for the PHN brand. Um, and what we did is just we added a folder. And um, that's the wealth one. It is, everything is based on the same code base, but using different variables that will make it look technically different. Um, so basically, it does work. Um, so with, thanks to some Webpack magic, uh, when I'm building a, the entire design system, I have to build it uh, at least twice per, per brand, one for development and one for production. Uh, and it spits out nice components that react the way they should be acting. And, and for developers, it's super easy to be able to, to give access to a brand to a new component. And you don't really have to do it for each brand. And that's pretty much it. Uh, my handle is available probably everywhere. Uh, I'm more a reader than a writer. But if you have any question, I'm more than happy to give more guidance on how we did it. Thank you. <laughs>